Jellyfish, 1999. Um, the first thing I would start with is, is um, thinking about your breathing, right? So I say this in almost every single video I make because it's just that powerful and it's, it's changed my life that much. If you do this test, take a deep breath um, right now. Uh, take a deep breath. After you took the deep breath, if your shoulders moved up into the air, right? If your upper upper back and shoulders went, went up, if you went like this, then you want to watch this video. It's called How to Breathe by Dr. Vranich. V-R-A-N-I-C-H. This is one thing that I wish someone told me 27 years ago. Right? I've been playing soccer my whole life and I just, right? It's, it's changed my life so much that in almost every video, I, this is the first thing I ask players because there's the rule of three, three minutes without air, three hours in an unhospitable, in unhospitable environment, and then three, three weeks, give or take, without food or water, you're dead. Three minutes without air, you're dead. That's why it's the most important thing, right? Dr. Brandage says players of the equal, two players of equal skills, the one who's got better endurance is gonna win every time. So if you get your breathing right, and right, if this is the only thing you take away from this video, then then uh, right that then that that's going that's going to change your life. I promise you. So just check it out. Check it out. See what you think. The second thing is movement. Right, your ability to be fluid and dynamic on the field um, can 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 really change just by using what's called an RMT rope. Right, an RMT rope. It's similar to a jump rope, but there are things that you can't do with a jump rope that you can do with an RMT rope. So for that reason, um, if you have a jump rope in your house and you're not using it or you have one at your school, I'm sure there's one in the gym that maybe you could borrow, but just by swinging it to the left and to the right of your body, it's gonna help you effortlessly improve your balance. It's also gonna help you improve your core strength, your running technique, right? So a lot of players have tools, have balls in their house that they're not using or they don't realize could be used as soccer training tools. So what I would do is I would find find everything if you're not spending any, um, I don't know if you're at home or if you're actually at your, your junior college right now, but um, go, go through your, take stock of what's in your room, take stock of your, your weights, if you got resistance bands, if you would have all your tools, tennis balls, um, tennis balls, golf balls, lacrosse balls, take, get all your balls and kind of ga gather them so you can see them and then start to, um, Bring them, right? Uh, bring, bring your training tools with you so that you can always be using them, right? I'm in Italy and I have my whole backpack is literally just filled with soccer training tools. I have more soccer training tools than I have, than I have shoes, than I have pants, shorts, shirts, and jackets and socks, right? So this is not, this is a, this is just a lifestyle. It's and and right because. I just love playing and I love training. So anyway, um, but but so so the whole point is if you can get yourself some rope, then you can make you can make an RMT rope. Just Google how to make an RMT rope, and and you know what's crazy is at one point you know I, I used to spend so much time weight training for soccer, and I was able to squat. I was able to squat 500 pounds weighing 149 pounds and I looked big and I was strong but I didn't feel quick I didn't feel nimble I didn't feel explosive and and then when I started to swing this RMT rope around um, it just it just makes you feel right it just makes you feel like like water right you just Right, you just start to move like a ninja on the soccer field, and so for that reason, if you can, uh, if you can invest in a j jump rope or make an RMT rope, um, then you're going to see an improvement in your. It's going to help you uh, juggle. Right, I noticed my juggling improved, and since my juggling improved, my passing, my shooting, and my even even my dribbling improved. It's like every part of my game got better as I started to swing this rope around. So, um, so if you want to learn more, search David Weck, David Weck, RMT rope, right? That's David 
W-E-C-K plus R-M-T growth. So that's step two, right? Because if you get your breath right, if you get your breath right, and then you get your movement right, they lay down the foundation for your, the whole entire, your whole entire life of breathing and movement, right? It's injury prevention. If you lay down a base of breathing and, and movement, your house is gonna be enormous. But if you don't have a good base of breathing, if you have poor m movement and you're always getting injured, you know, your house can't grow as tall. The second thing you, or the third thing you wanna to start to do is bring a ball everywhere you go. If you bring a ball everywhere you go, like a size one ball or a tennis ball, then you could, oh, you could start to get more touches. The more touches you get, the more mistakes you make. The more mistakes you make, the more you're gonna learn. So, um, you know, I would be perpetually, if your child's in a month, I mean, just getting your repetitions up, right? Who doesn't have one minute to just, uh, to juggle? Who doesn't have one minute to just spend some time dribbling? Everywhere you go, juggling and dribbling, juggling and dribbling, perpetually, like nonstop, nonstop, thousands, thousands of touches. Um, I like a tennis ball, but I like a size one ball better because, um, because I think it's, it's easier, it's easier to dribble with a size one ball compared to a tennis ball. Um, a tennis ball is nice to juggle, but you can do both things ideally with a size one ball. But if you have a tennis ball, tennis ball is great, right? You can still juggle and dribble with a tennis ball. Um, so, so, um, the, the, the whole point is that whatever size ball you have, bring it everywhere you go. It doesn't matter if it's a size five, size three, size four, just bring some type of ball with you everywhere you go. So you get more touches. That's called a soccer vacation. Bring a ball with you everywhere you go. In terms of juggling and dribbling for dribbling, there's one pattern that if you learn, it's going to help you significantly improve your dribbling abilities. If your dribbling improves, that, that means your passing and shooting improve because, because you're going to get your head up. Once you get your head up, you're going to be able to be more aware of time and space. So here's the Tom Turnbull dribbling sequence. It goes like this. It goes outside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, outside, inside, outside, inside. If you repeat that over and over and over for one minute a day, um, it's going to, it's a rhythmic pattern, right? A rhythmic pattern, which means that it's going to help you not think about dribbling. When you're dribbling on the soccer field, you don't want to think about dribbling. You just want to be moving and, and reacting, right? You just want to be flowing. This is going to help you effortlessly dance around opponents and defenders. So you got to say it out loud when you do it. When you say it out loud, it's going to help you internalize it. It's going to establish a mind-body connection, right? So outside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, outside, inside, outside, inside. The, the next thing is you want to say it, you want to go slow in the beginning. A lot of players I teach this to, they go, they try to go way too fast, right? And when they're practicing, they go way too fast. And then when they get in the game, it, it hasn't set, right? They haven't internalized it. And it, you, you got to go, right? Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. You got to go slow in the beginning. So you really just get it. Because if you, if you can't go slow and relax, then you can't be relaxed when you're moving at speed in high pressure situations. So the slower you go, the faster you're going to be able to do it in games, right? Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Okay, so that's dribbling. For juggling, you want to start to juggle different size balls, right? Heavier balls, like even basketball, um, um, a medicine ball, right? A 2.2 pound medicine ball that's going to help you improve your power. Smaller balls, any like tennis ball all the way up to a size four is going to improve your precision. If you improve improve your precision and your power, it's going to sharpen your touch. The sharper your touch, the more dangerous you're going to be on the field. So I have a vessel right there. If you spend uh, a few minutes a day juggling into different size garbage cans, barrels, buckets, hampers, whatever you got, right? Look, it can look like this. This is called the barrel game. It's, a ju it's basically just a juggling game. So with the bounce, you go... Then both 
feet with a bounce. Then you can go right thigh. Then left thigh. Both thighs alternating. And then you finish with any part of the body you want, with or without a bounce. Right, so that's the progression. And as you start to get better at this game, you can take a few steps back to make it more challenging. You can use different size balls, so the smaller the ball, the harder it is in theory. And then you can start to put stuff in your hands to make it harder for you to move. And this is gonna help you in a game in so many different ways. Like it's gonna help you be able to take the ball out of the air and then orient yourself towards the goal or wherever you wanna go. Um, if you could take the ball out of the air swiftly, it's gonna catch the defenders off guard. Um, your ability to juggle while moving forward is going to help you weight the touch of your dribble. So for all those reasons, this barrel game, if you spent a minute a day doing that, a minute a day with the Tom Turnbull dribbling sequence and swinging the arm tee rope around after, you, after you've learned how to breathe with Dr. Branich, man, you are going to be dangerous come trials. So hopefully some of these ideas help.